Good morning. morning. On this sunny, sunny day. When I was ordained some 30 years ago, my grandfather, who farmed until he was in his 90s, took me aside and said, Wade, don't ever pray in church that the rain stops. Instead, pray for moderation. So we pray for this growing year of 2018 and all the days of our life that God would send the wonderful rain as he sees fit and we would like to have it in moderation. The Board of Social Ministry is asking for donations for the seminary food drive to go to the families of students who are now attending Concordia at St. Louis. We will be collecting non-perishable items in the atrium until March the 18th. The food pantry volunteers are asking if anyone has a bagless vacuum in good working order. If you are willing to donate it, please contact the church office. And the Lent Easter daily Bible readings are still available in the Welcome Center.
please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, in the presence of one another. I confess to Almighty God before the whole company of heaven and unto you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to life everlasting. Amen. I confess. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you see that of ourselves, we have no strength. By your mighty power, defend us from all adversities that may happen to body, and for all evil thoughts may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from the 17th chapter of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from the fifth chapter of Romans, where Paul teaches we are reconciled to God. This will also be used as the sermon text. We begin with the first verse. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, 
now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Plagiarized. The Holy Gospel for this morning is from Mark chapter 8, verses 27 through 38. And Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. Others say, Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of the Father with all of his angels. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and visible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnated, Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was man-made, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And hope does not disappoint us. People of faith, people like all of you, cling to that promise when life throws all it can at us. And we know it will get better that something good will come out of something evil. Some lesson will be learned, some growth will take place, some new possibility will emerge. When dealing with infertility, when fighting that dreaded disease, cancer, and so many, many of my friends and members of my old church, as I'm sure here in this church, are fighting cancer, are searching for a mate, we pray that hope will not disappoint us. When tornadoes wipe towns off the map, our acts of violence take place in our schools. We pray that hope will not disappoint us. When struggling to keep our kids safe, or watching our parents almost age daily right before our eyes, we pray that hope will not disappoint us. But is this true? People of faith cling to that promise, but hope was not always seen as the ultimate answer to life. In fact, when this letter arrived the church in Rome, any Roman listening to this passage might have almost laughed at that sentence. St. Paul was writing to an audience that believed the opposite. Hope was for the weaklings. Hope was for those people that couldn't do anything for themselves. You see, in St. Paul's day, the prevailing cultural wisdom came from the Stoics. And the Stoic school of thought was that hope was a vice and not a virtue. Hope was for those weaklings. Hope was for those people who could not achieve their goals by their wit, by their power, by their might, by their wealth, by their namesake. Indeed, the best thing to do was to stop fooling yourself and simply face the reality that in this world there is no hope. Our hope, my dear friends, is in Jesus Christ. For the ancient Stoic and for a lot of people living today, their hope is simply in themselves, in their knowledge, in their intellect, in their power, in their abilities, in their ability to change and move things for their advantage. But as we know, this type of hope will always come to disappointment. It has been said that Alexander the Great wept bitterly because he had no more worlds to conquer. Christian hope is not something that we conquer. Christian hope is something that is given to us. It's given to us by our faith and trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this hope will not disappoint us now, and it definitely will not disappoint us in eternity. Hope, Christian hope, is real and satisfying. 
Through faith in Jesus Christ, we have been justified. What does that mean? That we have been declared just and holy by God Almighty himself. And this declaration has taken place where? Right there, that little thing with the cross on top of it. You see it right there in the middle of the church where it belongs? We have been declared holy in the waters of holy baptism. Through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our past is forgiven and we are free. We are free to hope for the future. Also, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are no longer enemies at God. We are no longer at war with God. We have been reconciled to him. But what does this mean in some words I can understand, Pastor? Just imagine, just imagine that you're looking into the face of God. And in his face, there is no anger. In his face, there is no disgust. In his face and in his eyes, there are no words written, you should have did better. Instead, in his face, we see only love and acceptance. And that same love and acceptance is on our face too because we know God loves us and because we know that God gives us hope. Now that's reconciliation. Each and every one of us, if we know it or not, have a deep-seated need for love and peace. God has demonstrated his love for us that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Peace with God is ours because we have been made holy and righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. And this peace helps us to deal with and rise above the problems and the difficulties of our life. I wonder what the author of our sermon hymn went through in his life. His name is Edward Mott. And it had to be something very challenging or very hard or very difficult because he writes, this oath, this covenant and blood, support me in the raging flood. When every earthly prop gives way, he is then my hope and stay. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground, all those other things we trust in so much, especially that green stuff, is sinking, sinking sand. The love of God is poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, and it is the Holy Spirit who sustains our hope, so we will never, never, ever be disappointed as God's children. Our afflictions and our problems and our difficulties do not change the love of God or negate our hope. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, who on the cross conquered sin, death, and the devil, whose body was put in the grave like our bodies someday are going to be put in the grave. And Jesus rose on the third day, and he ascended back into heaven, and by his grace, and only by his grace, he gives us the hope that someday we're going to be in heaven too. Our hope is in Jesus, and he will not disappoint us. 
since we have been declared holy and reconciled to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are certain that our lives are important. And we are certain that nothing will destroy our peace and nothing will alter or change or destroy our hope. Because Jesus has passed through suffering and death, and now he lives. And because of that, and only because of that, hope, hope does not disappoint us. Please join me in prayer. As God's chosen ones, beloved sons and daughters of God Almighty, justified by faith and therefore at peace with God, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all people according to their needs, for the church throughout the world, that all sin and causes of offense may be cast out of our lives by the power of the cross so that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For people of every language and nation in the world, that all may be delivered from warfare, oppression, and violence, and live in the peace and safety God intends for his creatures. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who serve in the armed forces of our nation, that they may defend the innocent, maintain justice, and establish peace. Comfort, guide, and be with the families of those men and women who are deployed far away. By the death and resurrection of your Son, reconcile us with our enemies, that we may all bear witness to your power and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, facing surgery or convalescing, that their sicknesses may be turned to health and that they may experience the love of God through our care and concern. And out of care and concern, we pray for our pastor, Ted Gall, Cindy Esch, Sandy Stemke, Jim Zachara, Tim Mueller, Jim Bergen, also Jacqueline Wiseman, Sherry Nickham, Jean Staben, and also Ashley Blair, and also those people in our own hearts whom we mention at this time.
Let us pray to the Lord. For this congregation, St. John's Lutheran Church, Effingham, Illinois, that we make the good confession with our lips that Jesus is the Christ, and also take up our cross and show the love of God with our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Justified by faith, at peace with God, and called to take up our cross and follow Jesus, we entrust our prayers to our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company in heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we celebrate the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, to renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and whenever he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, and whenever he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Lord, remember each of us in your kingdom as you have taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Welcome to a sunny, sunny day, and we thank God for that. And I thank God for all of you being here.